Hello and welcome to the Quebec Channel. I'm Jason, your host. I hope you are having a good Monday morning. I'm going to head on up to the hospital. And I wanted to talk about simulation theory. I believe that we do live in a simulation. Or I'm, I would say 99% sure that we are either living in a virtual reality and our actual physical sentient beings like the matrix or we are actually virtual constructs first of all why doesn't this screw me over why doesn't this freak me out because I was the same yesterday as I was today um, just because I'm based on zeros and ones or whatever this version uses doesn't mean that I am any less a person, that my memories are any less real, that thing, it does not matter, same as when I say whether I do not believe in God and things like that, just not a non-belief in God or a belief in God does not change who I am today or what I am. But if you look enough into science and physics and that, you see so many issues there's a symmetry in the universe, even down to the molecules. Think about it. For every molecule or particle in the universe, there is an equal, an opposite version, an exact opposite. This kind of symmetry you see in computers a lot. Um, if you look at the universe and the way it is formed and everything about it, the way we have a hard limit, light speed, that could be the maximum timing on a computer system. Everything has to go within that limit. But there is ways to bypass that limit. How do we bypass that limit? How do we know that exists? Well, it's called quantum physics and string theory and all that. If you think about what, what spooky interaction at a distance is what Einstein said it as. Basically, you could have two molecules separated by a distance, no matter what the distance, and they would mirror each other, interact in a way that shouldn't be possible, should not be possible at all. It is a spooky interaction at a distance. And in a computer that would be simple, because if two particles over a distance of um, millions of light years are interacting and mirroring each other then light speed goes out the window because these are acting outside of light speed so that's another thing but there is lots and lots if you look at the way everything seems to be created from simple basic um, think about it this way if you build a house when you build a house, you build it out of bricks that are the same size. It's more efficient. It creates a symmetry. It creates a form and a factor. Imagine trying to build a house if every single brick was a different shape and size. There was no formality to it. Think of the rules of physics that govern us. They they mirror the kind of limitations and rules we would set in a simulation ourselves. They're not organic, they're exact. And so this idea that there's a that we are part of a simulation and that the entire universe is a simulation is actually very much compelling when you look at it. The deeper you dive into it the more it's like, oh shit, yeah we, we does it affect my world? No, it doesn't affect my world, doesn't affect what I do. In my world, doesn't affect how I live. Doesn't affect my care for everyone. Because I'm still me. And if I was going to create a simulation, I would also create well, this is what I would create as the perfect simulation. You would have two parts to it. The first part would be the physical realm. 
physical realm would be where all interactions occur and where your base knowledge and experience is gained. Life. Then, you would want some sort of cohesive web to connect you all, like quantum physics. Then you would want a place to dump all the information. Heaven, astral plane, call it what you will. A place where you go when your physical body ends. It could very well be the second layer, another layer, another level to the game. We don't know yet, because we haven't been there. And you would put a system in place so that if you did visit there in your dreams, if the way to enhance your brains, the way to enhance interactivity was to allow people to dream, allow people to touch this place, then you'd create a way for people to forget their dreams, for not to bring back spoilers, or not very well, many spoilers. And then when you die, when your physical body dies, your essence, your intelligence, who you are, goes back up to that level, and then it can come back down in another form. Of course, spoilers, you make it so that when they come back down, they don't remember or don't remember very well. If you look at a lot of the things that happen, like sometimes this kid, there's a well-documented case of children who, for the, who remember almost reincarnation, remember complete details of their life before, until they're about six years old, and then they start to forget what were they, who they were and everything. And that. So, there's all these kind of things that if I was to create a situation, one that would work, that would evolve over time, because we may not be solving a problem, we may not, we may be a life support vessel, we may be a race of beings that for some reason our world, our universe has run out of energy or whatever happened and this was our way to survive. I mean, a lot of what we see, a lot of what I see over the past and history and that, a lot of the weird stuff that happens that we can't really explain is explained quite easily if it's a computer glitch or if it's a issue now and then. So, the idea of this simulation theory is actually really, really credible. It isn't a crackpot thing. There are a lot of very, very smart people out there who believe it. And the more you look at the physics of the universe and the way things work, it really does push it towards that being what it is. It would make sense of a lot of things. Like I've always said, I believe that this universe that we're in now, where we are in the physicality, this physical, we are here to gain experience, to live a life to, before we go back to wherever we go. Maybe that place is perfect, but how can you appreciate perfect if you haven't lived in something like this? And this would explain a lot of why um, pain and suffering and different people's lives. I also believe in some way that people choose what life they're going to take on, just like a character in a video game. And you may think, oh my god, my life is complete shit. Why would I ever, ever want to go through that? Well, if you have gone through 500 lives where you're the most amazing, wonderful person and you've got everything you want and you live in Beverly Hills and you have all the money and you, from, from birth to death you have everything you want and no challenge now. Well, look at our own game computers. Do we play those games or do we find them boring? Do we find them... They don't help us grow, they don't help us become who we can be. And so we... play Dark Souls on hard, without any manual. So yeah. 
And while you're in here, you may think, what the fuck, everything's against me, I'm just, just, I hate this, I hate this. And you can quit out if you want, but I wouldn't. I would never quit out of this, because you're here to learn something. You, or If you chose to be here and doing all this, you chose to learn something, well, and you won't know what you learned until the end. And if you end it too quickly, if you press the quit button, then you're... actually failing so yeah I believe that it's it's not 100% but I believe that there's a very good chance that we are in a simulation and that there's some reason to it. But like I said, it could just be an extremely advanced life raft for a race of beings who have lost a home or lost a world or their universe has come to an end. And it's maintained in a way to keep us sane, to keep us occupied. And the more you look at the world and the way things things happen in that, it does actually make a lot of sense of things. A crazy kind of sense. Alright, got to focus on this road. Anyway, I think I'm just going to just check this. And I think that's a good time to turn this off, so that was my ideas on simulation theory, so bye bye for now.